Good morning and welcome back. I'm Wendy Jo. So as promised over on TikTok, I am recording a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create journals. Printing and selling journals is one of our eight streams of income where we make multiple six figures a year and journals is just such an incredible passive income source because really once you create the journal then it's listed it's out there and people purchase it and you don't have to do anything else it's wonderful so i told you guys i know i've had a lot of you guys asking well how do you create them where do you sell them and so i'm going to dive into that today i'm actually going to share two places that you can have them printed um, custom made for you that are great. One obviously is Amazon. The other is a little secret that I've been keeping just for you guys over here on YouTube. So um, stick with me and let's jump into this and I'm going to show you the process. Each website you work with when you're printing your journals is going to have a template. And this may seem a little backwards to already be inside of Amazon KDP and dealing with all this, but you kind of have to start at the end and know what your what size you're doing and all that kind of stuff before you can actually create. So when you go in, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to actually set up Kindle Direct Publishing. Um, it's at kdp.amazon.com and you're simply going to set up an account. Um, if I was not signed in already, it would say, you know, do you want to set up an account or sign in? <clears throat> so once you are here, I'm just going to tell you exactly how to get to that template cover. Um, you're going to select what it is that you are creating, a paperback or hardcover. I recommend starting with the paperback. I'm going to show you this one down here is an old journal I did back last summer, just kind of playing around. And you can see right here, I have the paperback live, but the hardcover is just a draft that I can go ahead and set up and add it onto Amazon as well, really with just minor adjustments. So you can always go back and add a hardcover edition of your book right after you do the first one. I will tell you that once you get everything uploaded on Amazon, it can take up to 72 hours for them to approve everything. And I am gonna show you a couple little tricks that will help you get there a little faster. So first of all, though, we're gonna select paperback um, to, to create, but over here to the side, it says book cover, uh, you can use our online cover creation or upload a cover of your own. And this is really what you need a template for. So you're going to click create a great cover. Um, and then when you get into there, it's going to um, ask you, do you want to create a paperback or hardback? You're going to cr hit create a paperback. And then you're going to scroll down here to cover calculator and template generator. And that is what this is. I'm going to show you what it looks like before you push everything in. So it's going to bring this up. And this is where you can create your templates for your books. Now, the templates are going to vary slightly in size. And don't worry if you get like all done and you upload your cover and it's off by like a quarter of an inch or something. They tell you exactly what size that the cover should have been. And you can go back into Canva and correct it. So it's a super simple fix once you've kind of got the hang of it. So you're gonna select, we said we were gonna go with paperbacks, so you're gonna select paperback, interior type, you're just gonna go standard color, um, it doesn't matter. Like they don't, you can do premium if you want to, but I always do standard. Um, unless you're doing like a photo book or something like that, that um, or maybe like a graphic novel, then you would probably wanna go with that premium, but otherwise standard color for journals is perfectly fine because it's really gonna be pretty much black and white. Um, select your paper type, white paper, page turn direction, this really should read um, which direction are you leading, reading, which in most cultures you read from left to right. So it's not the, the direction that you're turning the page because that doesn't make sense. That's actually right to left. So it's the direction you're reading. So left to right and then select your measurement units for us in the United States, it's inches and then your interior trim size. Now this is where you're deciding what size book you're doing. We do mostly now eight and a half by 11 inch, which is a larger like journal, sketchbook, that type of thing. Um, the other size that we use a lot is this 6.69 by 9.61. So just select whatever you wanna do. Um, it's completely up to you. I'm gonna choose eight and a half by 11 on here, and then you have to select your page count. Now this is what can throw things off a little bit by anywhere from you know an eighth to a quarter of an inch, is if you say it's 100 pages and then you end up with 110 pages, it's gonna change the size. Um, so 
it, it just really depends on what you're creating. 60 pages is pretty normal for a lot of these journals. Um, you know, people just do it for 60 pages and then they want somebody to buy another book, right? And the less pages you have, the less expensive your book will cost to print. So um, for this example, we'll just say 60 pages and then you just hit calculate dimensions and it will tell you exactly all of the dimensions you need. You can download a template if you want to. Um, and if you download a template, then all you'll do is you'll go in and you'll lay it on top of what you're creating inside of Canva. But what I do is I just look at the dimensions here and then I would create inside of Canva this size because this is your overall size. Um, but you can definitely, I'll download this just so that um, you guys can see of course, it's a zip file, so let me open that. Um, okay. All right, so now, now that we know what size we're creating, we're doing an eight and a half by 11, and we are doing, you know, this size with that many pages, then we're gonna go over to Canva, and we are going to create a design. We're gonna make it a custom size. Now, I know my sizes based over here, on my calculator is 17.475 by 11.25. 17.475 by 11.25 inches. Create new design. Okay, so this is the size, but if you're more comfortable um, working with that template, then you can actually upload that template that you just downloaded. So let's go to downloads and what was the download actually called? Paperback. So let me see. This is what it looks like inside of my very disorganized computer because when you are creative, um, unfortunately, sometimes things are just not very organized. Okay, so this is your template. So you're going to hit open, upload it, and then you're going to do this. So you've already set your paper to the size that you wanted. And it's actually slightly, now see this says 17.385 by 11.25. So they actually changed it slightly. So I'm gonna go up here and resize. If you have Pro, you can actually resize your document um, without having to create a whole new, new one. So I'm just gonna resize my document and then drag this and now it should be set. Okay, so then what you can do with this image you just dropped in there is change the transparency to where it's really light so that you know what you're working with and you're gonna create. So I'm gonna show you guys just something that my daughter created and um, work with this because it's super easy. <laughs> so this is um, a drawing that my daughter did and she actually has turned this into a journal and so all I do is I created this image and then I am now dragging it onto my template. Okay. And then I created a back image, which these are just eight and a half by 11 images that we created. And there you go. And you can see there's a little gap right there. So we want to stretch this just a tiny bit so that it hides that gap. There we go. So she wanted a dark spine on her notebook and um, she hand draws these, it's so cute. Um, and these are actually available on Amazon. But um, we create a little back cover, a little back logo. You have to leave a space here for your um, barcode that they're gonna put on there because they're gonna give you an ISBN. Now I'm gonna show you, um, we're gonna go, so I'm gonna position this backward. I'm gonna position this one backwards just so that I can see my template that's back there um, and make sure that everything is lined up correctly. So you can see this red right here is the bleed line, which means that nothing is gonna print where that's at. Uh, let me change the transparency. Well, hang on just a second change the transparency here so you guys can see so anything where that red is at is an area where there won't be any printing this is where the barcode is going to be so we just want to make sure that none of this is where that barcode is at and then obviously here's your front cover etc 
So once you're happy with your design, now let me go back. I'm gonna show you one other thing. So if you're like uncertain of how to create the actual images for that cover, if you will just go in and search notebook, it's gonna give you all kinds of notebook ideas. Now, you can't use these to actually sell, but you definitely can get inspiration from them for your notebook. So um, I'm just gonna choose this one. And again, see so this is an eight and a half by 11. So this is the size that we created that image on for my daughter's journal. And so this is the size you're gonna work with. And obviously you could go in, you could change the words here. You could like change around some colors or add some other things to this and maybe um, get away with it. But I always recommend, you know, starting fresh because you do not want to um, get in trouble for copyright infringement. So, um, but you can start with this. You can go ahead and add a page and then create your own here and then just delete what they've got going on. So you can create your own image in here, play around with it, whatever you want, but you're gonna need to create two pages. You're gonna need your front cover and your back cover. And, um, you know, like I said, on ours, we always add just that little, um, you know, something on the back. For this one, we just copied the image from the front and then her, this is her whole line, don't let it go to your head. And she has all of this artwork that she's created um, that, you know, is kind of like this. So once you have created those images, added them here, then you wanna make sure that you delete your um, template because you don't wanna save it like this. <laughs> so we're just gonna go in and we're going to delete that template. And now we have our book cover. Now, whenever you download your book cover, you're actually going to download it as a PDF print because there's an option to upload it as a PDF print when you're working with KDP. So you're gonna download it as a PDF print. Okay, so that's your cover. Now, let's work on the inside. The inside is so easy, and uh, when I learned this trick, I was like, mind blown. So, if you are doing a blank journal, you do have to have some sort of print on those pages or KDP will reject it. They do not like completely blank journals. So this is what we do. Um, I have my guides turned on on this one, but um, we add, see this little row of dotted lines? We add this little, very faint row of dotted lines, kind of like a tear line, um, right where the, the seam would be. And this journal is obviously, this was a long one, but you will alternate those. So let me go to the very front. We always create a title page that says this book belongs to with a line and then obviously the back side of this the seam is going to be on the right side and then the next page is going to be the front the seam is on the left so we put our dots there and then the right put our dots there okay so let me show you how easy this is to create so we're going to do a new presentation so when you go in, obviously this looks nothing like a notebook. And when I first learned that you could do this on Google Slides, I was like, why would you do this on Google Slides? But it's so much easier than working on docs or anything else and you'll see why here in a second. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your page setup and you're going to select custom and you're gonna put in whatever size of journal you're doing. So for us, we're doing an eight and a half by 11 inches and we're gonna apply it. So now we have a regular notebook paper size ready to go. And then I just delete out the text boxes that they have because I don't want them on there. <clears throat> okay, so then what I do for that um, front page is over on Canva, first we create that, um, you know, this book belongs to. So we're gonna add a subheading and write this book belongs to and you can obviously pick whatever font that you want. And then you're going to add a line. And you can change the weight of your line. There we go. Just enough space for them to be able to 
write their name and make sure it's centered. And so whenever I download this, I'm going to download it as an image with a transparent background so that all I have are the words and this, right? Okay, and then let me show you how I create the other pages that I was just showing you. So um, here's the dotted lines. Okay, so now that doesn't look anything like what I showed you, but I promise it's super easy. Your course, you can turn on your guides and um, basically just wrap over where you want that line to be. And this is where um, it's a little playing around. I'm kind of figure out that basically margins, so make this line just like inside of half. I'm going to line this up with that um, margin. So I'm going to do the same thing over on this side, so the same half, and just inside of eight. And you know, once you kind of like get the hang of it, you will know what you're doing with this. But, um, so basically, what we do is we stand this all the way. I'm just going to grab that. Um, I'm do this just a second. And you want to make sure you leave a half inch margin at the bottom. You see how this um, little square looks like it's showing you where the normal half margins would be. Um, and so then what I do with this is I actually need to get a color. And this is the exact spot I use, but I'm just doing this just for the sake of this video. And then I take transparency down to like 30 ish. So it's just super nice. This is not the same one I use. Um, I think this is actually the one I use as a pro one. Um, this is also a pro one. So I actually can't use a lot of switching. I just want to create this. And the reason for this is that it's because you don't have to have a page. You don't have to have a page in a row. So you find out something on there that um, pulls it into the thing that you actually have a page on the thing. Because um, that actually pulls it into the thing that you have um, goes on there. Design. But that's okay. Anyway, so once you have created your blank page, then you're going to download those as PNGs with a transparent background and hit the download button. Okay, so now we're back over here. We're gonna insert images. So there it is. So this is that cover page we created and we're just gonna set it right in there and we're gonna center it. And then, well, I already did this, but I'll show you. I basically just went into the exact same thing. I found the image of the dotted lines. This is, on the wrong side. So you can create one image and then just flip it if you want to. So on inside of um, the presentation, you can literally just rotate this around. And now those lines are on that side. And I create the guidelines in here just so that I know exactly where everything needs to be. Um, so let me drag this. Okay, so I set them at half an inch and then I just bring over the image to where those lines are just inside that half inch margin. Now this is too tall, so I'm gonna shorten this down and you can actually do this here, add a horizontal guideline and you can do the same on the bottom so that you can make sure that your little um, dots are inside of the print because if it is not inside of the print margin, then KDP will reject your book. So, and then once you've got that, if you want those moved out of the way, you can. But you can see, so that, because this is page one, then page two, this, this is gonna be the inner seam and it's gonna go back and forth, back and forth. So now I'm going to copy this page, I'm going to paste this page, and now we're on the new page and I'm gonna rotate this back. This part seems time consuming, but just wait, you'll see. So we're gonna flip it back. We're going to scooch it back over to where it is now right at this margin line. So now we have right, left. So now I'm gonna copy this one again and I'm going to paste right below this. All right, now here's where the fun happens. Let me move myself over here. So now I have my, this book belongs to, and I have the back side of this, and then I have front and back. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this, and then I'm gonna hit the shift button and click the next one. I'm going to right click and hit copy, and then I'm going to paste. Now on my Mac, it's Command V. There's usually some sort of a shortcut. And literally all you're going to do is just Command V. On and on and on until you have the amount of pages that you have decided are in your book. You guys, that is it. So just like that, I just did 102 pages. And the reason I do 102 instead of just 100 is because I'm allowing for that very front, this book belongs to page, as well as the back side of that. So that's, those two to me are just kind of a wash. I want them to have 100 pages to sketch on. Um, and that's actually gonna be 50 pages front and back. So if you're doing 100 and if you're doing 60 pages, then you actually need to make 120 blank pages. So we're gonna go on down 
and again 122 for me so those first two pages are washed so there's 120 total fronts and backs which is 60 pages in the journal which is very common so that's how easy it is to create that interior and you can do the exact same thing with um, lined pages and if you're doing lined pages then you can actually search lined journal pages and all you've got to do is take this bad boy select which style you like so dashed or full lines however you want to do it delete the my notes thing or replace it with something else and in this situation it is totally fine to use this blank page like there is no like this just simplifies your life um there is no reason to worry about copywriting on something like this because it's literally just a bunch of lines on a piece of paper um, if you want to add one more line up there you could or whatever but then you're going to download this transparent background and i'm only going to select just that first page because i'm not creating all of these but you could certainly do whatever you wanted to with that so i'm going to download that um and then if i was going to do lined pages then rather than doing the blank pages like we just did then we're going to go in and we're going to hit insert image upload from computer i'm going to go down to that minimalist because I didn't rename it. And there is those lines right there. We're gonna open that. And it's already in there. I'm actually going to um, delete the other one. Let's see, which one am I deleting? Nope, not that one. So we're gonna do this. Make sure it is centered and it has those guides. They turn red and Again, if you don't want the guides to show, just click up here and hit get rid of it. Um, and then you have your lined pages and you can literally just do the copy paste like I just did and do the same thing and you have lined pages. So whatever you decide to do, once you've created however many pages that you want inside of here, you're going to go up here, hit file, download, and you're going to export it as a PDF document. And that's it then so now you have your cover and you have your pages whatever you decide to do and you can do as much or as little with these pages as you want to i'm showing you how to do the blank journal um, because this is a trick you need to know because kdp will reject your blank journal if you do not have this in here but you can certainly do lines you can do i mean there are look at all of the the little things that you I mean just go crazy obviously again you have to change these things up you can't just use their templates to print your books because there are copyright issues but you can certainly use this as inspiration um so you know you can certainly go crazy you can create a self-care journal you can create a recipe book you can create whatever like the sky's the limit but we're starting with blank because blank is easy um, so once you've downloaded it then you're going to go back over to your amazon kindle you're going to click paperback and you're just going to fill in the details you're gonna fill in the book title, subtitle if you want it. Um, if you are creating a series of books, then you can create a series here. Edition number would be only if like you wrote a book and then a year or two later you made a new edition of it, then you could put second edition. Um, otherwise, there's no reason. This is where you can use your real name or you can use your pen name. We use a pen name for most of our journals. Um, but if you have journals that are all in the same genre, use the same pen name because people will click on the author name to see what else they have to offer and you want it to all be the same. So, um, somebody said on my TikTok, you know, if you write, do journals for cows or whatever, that your pen name could be Moolissa, <laughs> which I think is great. But, um, and you know, you just want all of them to be the same because if they love your one journal, they may be interested in others that you have to offer. Uh, if somebody else helped you with it, then you can add them as a contributor here. You're going to write a description here. You have 4,000 characters to write a description about your book. And then your publishing rights. I own the copyright and hold the necessary publishing rights, which just means you made the book. Um, obviously, if it's public domain work, then, you know, it's public domain. 
pick your keywords. I'm not going into keyword research here. We've talked about keyword research. We'll go more into keyword research, but um, you know, I do recommend that when you're picking your title and when you're working on your description and your keywords that you search on Amazon for other journals that are bestsellers that are doing really well in that same area um, and definitely use some of the keywords that they're using in their titles and their descriptions in yours it'll help get you more visibility um, so you're going to do these keywords which no one's going to see these keywords except you um, but if somebody types in one of these words in their search then it's going to pull up your journal so this is where you want to use what's called long tail keywords which means you don't want to just put journal or even women's journal <coughs> Instead, you're going to want to put it something like, like if we go with the cow theme, you know, um, funny cow journal or um, cow journal for women or cow lovers journal or something like that. And they recommend not using words that you already used in your title. They recommend using other words. So um, those are just things that you definitely want to add in there. You can choose up to two categories when, when you're working with Amazon KDP the books have to be in book categories. I'm gonna show you another way that you can put your books on Amazon that does not require you to choose a book category. You will see books on Amazon that are listed in the weirdest places that have nothing to do with books themselves. However, they become best sellers because they're the only book in that category because it's like some random category like gardening or motorcycle parts and they're the best-selling journal but it gets them that bestseller tag on Amazon because they're the only ones that are selling journals in that category so that's just a little trick that they do um, does this book contain language situations or images inappropriate for children obviously if you have adult coloring books or adult content things then you would hit yes otherwise hit no and then you hit save and continue now I'm gonna go back to my bookshelf and actually show you what it looks like when you do it. I'm gonna just use this book um, so that you can see um, how all of this works. So if I hit continue setup on the hardcover version of this book. So I have this, again, this is just an old one that I had done, save and continue. So when you get to the second page, then you're gonna say assign me a free KDP ISBN. And um, that just every book has to have an ISBN number and you can actually pay a service to create them but when you're doing them on Amazon KDP just have them create one create one for you um, then you um, it'll do the publication date for today's date but you can obviously change this if you want it to be a different publication date you choose your paper color obviously this is a black and white interior this one was a six by nine but if you want to change the size you can do that um, so if I wanted to select eight and a half by 11, then I would do that or eight and a quarter by 11. Sorry. These are eight and a quarter by 11, not eight and a half, um, on the hardbacks, no bleed. And then you choose your cover matte or glossy. And, um, it just depends on the artwork. Um, the artwork's going to pop a little bit more if it's glossy, glossy scratches a little bit more. Um, you can try both. I mean, you can just kind of play around and see what works. Um, then you're going to hit upload hardcover manuscript, which obviously we did a paperback, but I will show you. Um, and we did untitled presentation. So this was our book that we just did. And this is probably not going to work because it's the wrong size, but I'm just going to do it. So that's all you have to do is hit that um, untitled presentation, whatever it is that you created. Obviously, I would rename this. Um, hit upload hardcover manuscript and I mean it's done uploading it's just going to take it a second and then it'll pop up green there it is presentation is done and then you can launch a cover creator and create a cover right inside of KDP but I prefer to create my own you'll notice it has to be a PDF here so this can be a PDF a doc or an HTML an RTF I always just make these a PDF as well but your cover has to be a PDF it can't be images so you're going to upload your cover file now again, I'm gonna upload that one that I created and it's going to be incorrect, but I'm just gonna show you what, what will happen if, um, let me go with one of these. 
and see what happens because I have no idea what size it even is. <clears throat> and if you got a barcode, an ISBN from someone else, then you need to click this so that they know that um, it has a barcode on it. So once you've uploaded it, you've got that successfully, that successfully, then you're gonna launch your previewer. Now this is gonna be all over the place because I did not upload the, upload the correct size documents for this, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So it's going to launch this and it takes it a few minutes sometimes, so you just have to be patient. <clears throat> Okay, so I switched over to a different book that I already have published because um, the other one was just not loading because I was using all the wrong sizes. But this is what your preview will look like. And if there are problems, there will be little red triangles with exclamation points letting you know what the issues are. And it'll say things over here. Um, but obviously this one is formatted exactly right. You can flip through the pages and see what everything looks like. I don't know why it's taking so long to generate the previews. Okay, so this is one that I did where this was a lined notebook that I made, added the little dandelion details on some of the pages. Not every page has it, just some of them, um, but it was created the exact same way that I showed you guys. And you can see like some of the pages are just blank and then randomly there's little dandelions that are thrown in um, to the book. and they you try to try to throw in if you're doing something creative like this into the first couple of pages because they will actually show you a preview um, inside the book on Amazon and once you're good with it then you just hit approve and if you're not happy then you hit exit print previewer and you will go back in and you make your corrections and look at it again but in order to publish it you have to hit that approve button save and continue and then you'll set your pricing go ahead and go over and show you guys how to do that. I'm gonna have to do a lot of trimming on this video because it took forever. Okay, so then you're gonna set your pricing. Blank journals, you cannot do the expanded distribution. Um, they just, they don't. But like if you actually have like a lot of writing inside of them, then you can do expanded distribution, which means that um, bookstores and those types of things have the option to buy them in wholesale or bulk I guess I should say, and turn around and sell them in their stores. So you can certainly do that with different types of books, just not the blank journals. Uh, most of our journals we list at $6.99 for the small ones. The bigger ones we will list for more because the printing cost is higher. Um, so you can see if I sell it for $6.99, it's $2.15 for printing and my royalty is 60% of the price, which is $2.04 per journal, which is not a ton. Um, you know, blank journals obviously are not massive money makers. However, if you get one that becomes in high demand, then, you know, you're selling, you know, I, you go on there and you can see some of them have thousands of reviews and not everybody reviews what they purchase. And so, you know, thousands of these becomes a lot of money. And again, you can sell them all globally across Amazon and this is how much you will make on them in um, all those other countries as well so they become globally available and once you're happy with everything you're gonna publish your book um, so that is how you publish it on Amazon and I'll actually um, go back in um, and there it is so there's the price it shows you how many pages all of those details etc 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 and if you wanna look inside, then it shows you that inside of it, it has those pages, shows you what the back looks like, and that is that. So that is how you publish directly to Amazon. And this is you know, where your description and everything will show up. Obviously it becomes available through Prime, so if people have Prime, they don't have to pay for delivery. Um, so that's that. The other place, that you can um, publish your journals. And this would be, I'll just take you over there. This is a place called Book Patch. And Book Patch is another great site. Um, this is a self-publishing place. You can print your books. So basically, you're gonna go in, you're gonna choose, and this will tell you what the pricing is gonna be. You can order one book, you can order 50 books. So if you want to order, if you want to offer custom books that like you, um, 
they can put their name on it or whatever. This is a great way to do this. And you can go in again and select your size. So you can select any size you want. Perfect bound is a paperback. Spiral bound is obviously spiral bound. Um, so if I do paperback, the price is $4 per book. If I do spiral bound, it is $4.90 per book. And that's for eight and a half and 11, if you're eight and a half by 11. If you're doing the smaller um, six by nine, and they may actually have like a straight up six by nine too. I feel like they do. Yeah, they do. Six by nine, $4. So, I mean, you're looking between four and $5 per book. And then obviously order larger quantities, then you can get that lower price. Um, they have no minimums on this site. And basically it's the exact same setup as Amazon. So you do print on demand, which means you can create your book, you can list your book, you can order a copy of it or two, you can ship them out yourself. Um, you can set this up inside of your store. So you're gonna enter your book details, upload your print, your PDF for the inside, upload your cover, and then order one book or as many as you need. And here are all of their templates. So exactly the same as what I showed you for Amazon. And you just download your template. You choose, this is again, paperback or spiral. Choose your size. Shows you exactly how you're gonna do all of these things. And the benefit to this is you can go in and you can create your book here. <clears throat> and then if you have an Amazon seller account, you can actually go in and sell your book on Amazon and you can then put it in any category you want to. So um, it's a huge plus to creating on this site. The prices are fantastic. The only difference here is in order to get ISBNs, it's $25. Now, if you're selling it within the book patch, you do not have to have an ISBN. If you're selling it on your own website, you do not have to have an ISBN. The only reason you need an ISBN is if you're gonna list it on Amazon, then they would require you to have an ISBN, in which case you would have to buy their package. So you could do the basic um, or you can do premium. Uh, the other option for an ISBN is over here. There's several different places that you can do it, but you can refresh it. You can download it and this gives you the ISBN. And then on this site, they just ask you that you credit them whenever you, um, whenever you use it. So like you're going to credit the barcode generator company. But so you can definitely create your own barcodes that gets a little bit more in depth. But if you want to use book patch and then sell them on Amazon, then that's what you've got to do. Okay. So the individual plan here it is. It's a 99 cents per item sold plus the selling fees. And so you can sign up for an individual here and I will link this up below so it's easier for you guys, but when you sell as an individual, you don't get all of these benefits, but I mean, I highly recommend doing it this way just because you, you're charged 99 cents per item, but until you're selling at least 40 units a month, there's no reason to be paying this because the fees are the same <laughs> other than the dollar per item, which, you know, it's the same. So you just go down, you're going to sign up for an individual, um, once you have a professional account, then you can have a whole lot of integration and those types of things. So, I mean, you can definitely bite the bullet and do this, but, um, you know, either way. So I will link this up below. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that is not completely, um, confusing for you guys, but, oh, kdpbookpatch.com. 
that's step by step on how to create blank journals and where you can list them and how to get them uploaded and all those types of things. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you follow along, like all those fun things. And um, I'll be back with more tutorials later this week.